Holy crap, it's finally here. Hey everybody, Philip here. That is too hot to drink. And it looks like it's time for another album review, and today we're looking at the brand new record Jackpot Juicer by Sacramento rock giants Dance Gavin Birch. This record is Dance Gavin Dance's 10th full-length studio album. And boy, has this been one of the most chaotic album releases I have ever witnessed. The past few months have pretty much confirmed my theory that this band is pretty much cursed. So before we go into this record, let's get the current events related to Dance Gavin Dance out of the way, because there's a lot of them. First of all, this is Dance Gavin Dance's first album with their newest member, Andrew Wells. With a six member lineup, they came out swinging with a great new single titled Synergy, and not long after they announced that their new album, Jackpot Juicer, was to be released on July 29th. Unfortunately, as a lot of you now know, before the release of their second single, it was announced on April 14th that Tim Furyk, the longtime bassist of the band, had tragically passed away at the age of 34. Before we continue, I just want to say my heart goes out to the friends, family, and fans of Tim Furyk. Tim, you are an inspiration for so many people, myself included. At this point, the band announced that they would be dedicating their upcoming music festival to Tim Furyk and that they would proceed with the release of the album as planned because it is what Tim would have wanted. Before the release of their third single for the album, the band announced that longtime vocalist Tillian Pearson would be stepping away from the band following sexual assault allegations. At this point, there is still no clear answer as to whether or not he will return. That is all I'm going to say about the current state of things with Dance Gavin Dance. I don't really think there's any point in speculating what the band will do in the future because, you know, no one really knows. All I know for sure is that my expectations for the next record are kind of up in the air right now because we don't really know what will happen next. But we are not here to talk about their future releases, we are here to talk about Jackpot Juicer. The last time we'll ever hear Tim Furyk's bassline on a Dance Gavin Dance record and probably Tillian Pearson's vocals as well, not really sure though. Now when it comes to Dance Gavin Dance, for me, their last big stride was with instant gratification and Mothership. It seemed to me like Mothership was really the one that allowed the band to explode in popularity, but instant gratification was always the record I treasured most. Now Artificial Selection and Afterburner were still pretty good records, but I felt them to be a little less consistent. The issue I had with both records was that it seemed like the first half of either album hit you with all the best songs right off the bat, and then the second half would fade into some more okay tracks that I don't really listen to as often. So Instant Gratification still remained my favorite, but obviously DGD would still remain on my radar because I was very curious to see if they could top it. So I listened to all five of the singles, kept up with the music videos, with the news related to the album, including some early reviews that came out pretty high for this one. And finally, Dance Gavin Dance's 18-track hour-long album finally drops. So what can I say? After over four months since their first single, after all the news and the hype and the chaos that's been tied to this release, is this really the album that it has been hyped up to be for so long? Well, Yes. Holy fishnikes, this is my favorite Dance Gavin Dance album ever. It's better than Mothership, better than Instant Gratification, better than their old stuff. It just blows them out of the water. Now, no album is perfect. No album is perfect. So I'll start with my criticisms. First of all, even though I enjoy most of the songs on this album, the ones that I don't are pretty meh. The main ones that don't really strike me are Two Secret Weapons, Holy Ghost Spirit, Current Events, and the closing track, Have a Great Life. These are not failures, but I feel that they kind of start to blend together. It just kind of feels like these ones weren't as meticulously crafted as the rest on the album. Dance Gavin Dance's songs are noticeably placed into sections where it's like, here is the poppy part, here is the metalcore part, here is the funky groove part. It didn't really seem like it mattered which section they were putting next. It just kind of felt like they were throwing random stuff together and and hoping something stuck. This is something I've had a problem with before with Dance Gavin Dance releases, but it usually ends up being just a few tracks on the album that are like that, and then the rest are better. This opening track, on the other hand, uh, Untitled 2, this 30-second opener of just violin and cello, is kind of unnecessary. So what this is, is the second song on the album, Cream of the Crop, what are these song names? Has this section in the second half where you hear Tillian singing over some guitar and then you hear a violin 
violin slash cello in the background. And I think Untitled 2 is literally just the stripped violin and cello part pasted in front of the song, or at least it sounds very similar to it. But by itself, it does not match the album. It just didn't need to be here. I don't think you can just copy and paste this cello thing to the beginning of a song and cut it to be the intro of the entire album. Even though it ties in thematically to the song that it transitions into, this does not belong here. It just makes no sense to me. Another minor gripe with this record, it's kind of a personal thing, but it doesn't really matter if you shuffle the whole album or play it front to back. I don't think there's really any flow to it. You know, Have a Great Life is an okay song and has this big ending, but it doesn't really make you feel any sort of way as a closer for the album. And you already know how I feel about Untitled 2. This wouldn't even be any sort of deal if Dance Gavin Dance was still just starting out, but this is their 10th record and they have done this better before in the past. Mothership starting with Chucky versus the Giant Tortoise and then Young Robot and then all these fantastic songs ending with this huge finale and man of the year that was fantastic and even though I didn't like artificial selection as much starting the album with son of robot and ending with evaporate that was just a no-brainer there have been DGD albums in the past that had better flow to them when listening front to back and I know not that many people care about this and will just end up shuffling the record anyway but even though I think that this is their best album I'm unfortunately missing that amazing experience of the album having this great movement from beginning to end. Finally, adding on to that, it's kind of hard to listen to this entire album in one sitting. I've kind of felt that way with a lot of DGD's most recent records. I just think their style of music starts to blend after listening to it for like an hour straight. So by the end of the album, I am a little burnt out. It's not that it's bad, and it's not that it's generic. It just kind of burns you out. But holy bakonkies. The rest of this album, man, Wow. First of all, adding Andrew Wells to this band was the best decision Dance Gavin Dance has ever made. I listened to Idola on occasion. I thought the architect was pretty good, but here, oh man, his vocals just kill it. We've heard Andrew feature in past DGD tracks, obviously, but him being a full-fledged member has just changed the game. There's so many times on the album where I feel like the band said, huh, maybe Andrew's vocals will work better here instead of Tillian's or John's. And you know what? They're right. There's parts where Andrew is singing that I try to envision, huh, what would this sound like maybe if Tillian was given this part? And I honestly don't think it would have sounded as good. Tillian's a great vocalist, obviously, but he doesn't have to do everything, you know? Man, I thought having so many vocalists in this band would be overkill, but no, it's just better. The duet part in One Man's Cringe, when Tillian and Andrew are singing lines back and forth to each other, is immaculate. One Man's Cringe is definitely one of my favorites right now as well, for sure. Cream of the Crop, Jesus. Okay, the first half is okay, but the second half, when we hear those strings that I talked about earlier, but with the building snare, with Tillian singing these beautiful vocal melodies, with the guitar in the background, this is when the album is untouchable. And it's not the only time. I'm also really warming up to John Mess doing these melodic screams. I didn't love them the first time I heard them, but I think in this song he really nails his notes and they just work well with the song. They also definitely work well in Feels Bad Man. Such an awesome, relaxed disco groove. I feel like I'm in a roller rink in the 80s when I listen to this. The opening guitar of Die Another Day is gorgeous, and when John Mess comes in, it's just this awesome, chaotic, metal feeling. It kind of reminds me of Man of the Year. You know how that song started with like the soothing guitar part and then just goes insane chaos with John Mess? I get that here. Back on Deck has a great chorus. The whole song sounds so pop punky. And there's a part at the end of the chorus when John is screaming the words, I'm not the one, and in the background, it's just such a tasty vocal melody from Tillian. It's so nice. Pray to God for Your Mother is like the perfect mix of hardcore and funk for me, and the chorus is so uplifting and heavenly. Ember really reminds me of some instant gratification mothership material. Such a beautiful chorus on that one as well. Pop Off and Synergy are the same level of awesome for me. Synergy for just being so fun and jumpy to listen to, and Pop Off I feel is very unique, and the chords that Will Swan decides to use in the verses when Tillian is singing, they sound so beachy. Polka Dot Dobbins reminds me a little bit of a hair song. It's got a lot of different parts, but I think this song is more consistent and wants you to keep your head bobbing throughout the entire song. Awesome breakdown in here too. Long Nights in Jail really gets the funk going. I'm not really sure if the 3-4 section really fits the 4-4 groove that's throughout the rest of the song, but they're both good in their own right, even though they don't 
mesh well. I'll applaud Swallowed by Eternity for being different. There's this vocal part that starts at 109. Makes me think of like the movie where there's a countdown clock for a bomb to explode and there's a protagonist that has three minutes to save the world. That's just what I think when I hear that part. It sounds very suspenseful to me, but this song isn't really for me. I like the level of consistency here. They packed just as many musical styles into the album as they usually do, but it feels like most of these tracks are aware of themselves. They're not just throwing random grooves together as much anymore. Like for most of the songs, it feels like when they started writing it, they developed a plan for where they wanted it to go and how they wanted it to end. It's not perfect. There are some songs that still suffer from the same problems I've had with some songs on previous albums. Some songs songs are a little inconsistent, a little messy, and in some cases feel a little uninspired. And also I do feel like the album has no flow. It doesn't really have an order that you can listen to it in. It just kind of feels more like a jumble of 18 singles pasted together and is not necessarily cohesive when going from track to track. However, they have really trimmed a good bit of fat with Jackpot Juicer. The good songs are great, the great songs are fantastic, and it feels like they were really thinking about what beats and what melodies would work and what wouldn't most of the time. The production is better here. I think Will Swan's guitar tone could have been better at a few points. Sometimes Tillian's vocals are layered to the point where it sounds like a chorus of sirens. But for most of these songs, the composition is there, the groove is there, that awesome feeling I get when I listen to Dance Gavin Dance songs is all there. So they're getting pretty positive reception with this one, but here we are, you know? I enjoyed this one a lot, but the next record might sound nothing like this, or it might sound exactly like this. Who knows? As it stands now, Jackpot Juicer is pretty much more of a collection of singles to me than an album, and I could even consider it a little messy as a whole. But for the most part, what is here are some of the best tracks Dance Gavin Dance has ever released. The remaining members of the band really have been through the ringer during the process of releasing this, so I hope they can find the time to chill, recharge, accept that they made a great album here. A lot of their fan base seems to think so, and hopefully find their way towards the next chapter. Cue the Tillian vocal stem. Good day, my friend. How do you feel about Jackpot Juicer? Do you love it? Do you agree with my review? Do you hate this record? Put all your thoughts in the comments, and let me know if there's an album you want me to review. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all of the things that make YouTubers happy. And so, until next time, Dance Gavin Dance, Jackpot Juicer.